background of experience, what comes to me is that, okay, like uh, existence is the background of experience, but the experience that plays on that background is not necessarily existing. Right. In fact, you know, just to jump on ahead, it certainly is not existing. It's not, huh? Right. It's not. Well, can, may I drop a name? Could I use one of my name dropping tokens? And uh, Shankara, who, uh, what, uh, on whose tradition the TM uh, program is based, and uh, who is the most revered teacher possibly, you know, of, of anyone in India. I know that my fav favorite teacher, Ramana Maharshi, has said many times that Shankara was, you know, the ultimate embodied teacher. So Shankara s made a three-part statement, which is uh, just absolutely wonderful. He said that Brahman is real. The world is not real. Those are parts one and two. Those are the two sides of the coin. And then he went one step further, and he said that Brahman is the world. So we're, I'd like that to be our organizing principle, really. Because here's Shankara putting it in three steps. He has told us what exists, what doesn't exist. So he said Brahman is real, so then he just said Brahman is a world that means existence. And Brahman is, bi is this binary digital... Yes, off, he said, yes essentially, no. he said self-exists. Self-exists. And I can tell you that uh, there was a certain day, um, now, I, I don't And then he said the world doesn't exist. Yes, So the did. world is everything you see. Yes, it is. And then he said, uh, self is the world. Yes. So then, uh, you know, we don't really know what that means. <laughs> Maybe you're saying you do, but we're saying... That means that the world uh, reflects on self. If you look at it algebraically, it means that existence equals non-existence. Well, algebraically is not anything uh, special in my <laughs> book, you know. It's a real abstraction. Yeah. But anyhow, I mean, uh, he's just saying, like, if you said uh, self is existence, and he said self I exists, so it is existence, uh, it's either way to say it. Existence is self, and the world is not real, and uh, self is the world. Well, that self, as you were saying, is the background. Yeah. And so that you're saying the world plays on self or uh, reflects off of it or bumps in against it or something, and it, and, and it doesn't penetrate it. And so then it becomes apparent because if it penetrated it, you said it would just go right on through and you wouldn't, uh, it, there would be no, it wouldn't strike. So then, uh, you know, whether I'm okay, and you like that, right? <laughs> yes. I, Self I, is the world, but it just means uh, that's the paradox well, let, in those words. But to me, it just means, okay, the world is playing on self. Well, let's, let's save Chakra's third statement for later, because I believe it can only be appreciated, you know, after we've hashed out a couple things. Uh, so... You know, forgive me for being, um, for laboring a point and for being, you know, this is, would be fairly boring stuff unless this is your specific interest. <laughs> I realize that. But I can tell you that this has always been my specific interest. You know, when I was a kid, uh, <laughs> I won't even tell you the family stories, but I was very obsessed with finding the right definition of the word truth. That's what I've always wanted, was the right definition of the word truth. And I've come to believe that truth is nothing but existence whose form is infinite density. The bottom line, truth, reality with the capital R, is nothing but solid existence. Self is solid existence. You know, if, if Einstein can say E equals MC squared, you know, this abstraction is equivalent to this thing with mass in it, which is MC squared, then 
I can say that self, something abstract, is equivalent to solid existence. In both cases, there's this, there's this proposed equivalence between something abstract and something massive or solid. Uh, equivalence in a way, but you know, one thing Einstein said, which was really interesting just by that equation, is that a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of M uh, equals a huge amount of E. Yes. You know, now that is really kind of like where most people take it, you know. I mean, the fact that there's an equivalency, it's only a tiny bit of M equal, because the C squared is so, so huge. Yes. Well, if, so I, was, then, if I was indulging my Model 2 side, I would jump in and say, imagine how large the coefficient between existence and energy. If the coefficient between energy and mass is C squared, imagine how huge the coefficient between existence and energy is. So probably. what are you saying? That there's a hell of a lot of movement in a tiny, tiny bit of I'm reality? I'm not going to go there existence? because that puts true mass on a merely quantitative scale with false mass. And I, I can't go there. They're qualitatively different. So uh, let, let's leave that for now, except to say that um, maybe that wasn't the best example about the Einstein equation. There's another quote by Einstein that I absolutely love. He said, everything should be made as simple as possible but not one bit simpler. <laughs> <laughs>